I want to acknowledge and honour all the families, all the women, the fisherwomen, the shell workers who have come before us and held the traditions and knowledge over many generations and held that connection to country. Our hearts beat strongly for you and we send healing to your families. My name's Amanda Reynolds. I'm Garingai Daramalagayan. Yuanji, pay my respects to Budawanya, Yuan, all the mobs up and down the south coast. It's a great honour for me to speak about this. So shell work teaches us to listen to country as you go and gather the shells from the rock platforms or the beaches. You have to know and learn which shells belong to which beaches or which areas, what the tides are doing, what the winds are doing, what the stars are doing. So that act of collecting and gathering, not taking too much of anything and leaving enough so the little animals and creatures that grow in the shells can survive and continue is part of the tradition. Then comes the sorting and selecting, thinking about what story do these shells want to tell? What objects might I create? Some of the aunties are beautiful shell stringers that make necklaces that talk of clan and country and connection. Some make the shell work, the little slippers, the little thongs and high heels you've seen of Aunty Phyllis Stewart's that are in this exhibition. When I look at those pieces, I think Aunty Phyllis is asking us to walk lightly on country, to respect country. I'm also a possum cloak maker. I made this cloak to honour one of our ancestors from Sydney, Barangaroo, who lived at the time of the invasion of Sydney and carried the fisherwomen's law. It was very important for me to put some of these special little baby pippies on her cloak. So they're pippies that an animal ate and the shell washed up before it grew to a really big shell. You can see here I've got the dance of the grandparents. She's holding her grandfather, son and grandmother moon for that dance between grandfather, son and grandmother moon and the tides that come in and the tides that go out and the seasons that turn are all about balance and knowledge. It's like the making is driving the ideas and vice versa. I sometimes say to people, you should set up certain making spots in a certain way so that you always are able to make something. And once you make something, ideas will flow out of the making. So I use shells a lot for a multitude of reasons. I've lived on the South Coast and I've lived in Sussex Inland in particular. My parents moved there when I was seven years old. And there were sort of shells everywhere. You see things in the landscape and it's not until later you start to think, where did that shell come from? And why are those shells there in particular? But you know, I find shells really pleasing, both natural shells, real shells, but I also find the shells that I make really pleasing as well, especially the shells that are made out of a mold. And the other great thing is when you glaze them, quite often the glaze acts in a certain way, which I find really compelling and almost hypnotic. Shells have been a motif that have been used for a really long time. Since people have made art, people have used shells as both a subject and also as a tool to make things. So I'm sort of interested in the sort of both the profound use of shells as a sort of cultural item and as an important sort of political signifier, but also their base use too, I think is really interesting. And I'm very careful about with collecting shells is I'd be a bit reluctant to just go to the beach and sort of pick them. But if I did, I'd be really careful about where I did it. Everything I make is hand built. So it's building things coil by coil by coil. And then I work back into them with stamps like this stamp, which is a stamp of a shell, but then also just with sort of needle tools to make the holes and to sort of fill in the surface. So this is a Sydney cockle shell. And what I've done is I've made a mold out of the shell. And so this is called a press mold. You just push the clay into the mold and then you take the clay out and you've got a mold. I've got to make hundreds of these to use 
on the tiles, but also on the wall pieces, the roundels. So it's a long process, but it's weirdly contemplative. That's what you say until you've made like two square meters of them. Because I want people to really think those things that you see around you in the natural world, what do they mean and why are they there? And that's why shells are so important to me because they have been used and traded for millennia. And in the sort of colonial period, shells play a certain role. They mean a certain thing. But I'm also really interested in the way the landscapes have been modified. And that's the thing that I want people to think about. Nature is a construct, it's not a real thing, like this idea that we live in pristine wildernesses. And just be more thoughtful as you move through the landscape, like what does it mean? Who was here before I was here? Why is that there? Why is that over there? They're the things that I hope people take away.